music. She can sing secular music, but she chooses not to. We can do it. She called American Idol, but she's never done it. She stays here. I call her the sweet psalmist of Central. And I thank her so much. swiftly into the word of the Lord. First of all, giving out to God. He's given out to God to giving us leaders of today. And we thank you for our pastor. We thank you for the pa for the pastors help me. I thank all of you for being here today. We got a few technical difficulties. It's God will work them out. And all these fine yokemen in the vineyards, the men's course, and everybody. Um, we just gonna move right into it because it's all about Jesus. Amen. My wife wasn't able to make it today, but she told me to get a tape. So I'm gonna get her a tape, and she'll be able to uh, hear the message. But though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory in. For of necessity is laid upon me. Woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel. I couldn't do it anyway because Jeremiah the prophet said it's like fire. Shut up him up. Even if I tried to, I couldn't do it. So, I invite you to turn with me to Luke, the second chapter. Luke, the second chapter. Verses. Hmm. I'm going to give you the verses in a minute. Luke, the second chapter, verses 41 through 45. Luke, chapter 2, verses 41 through 45. I'm going to read it in your hearing. Now, his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. And when they had fulfilled the days, as they returned, the child tarried behind in Jerusalem. And Joseph and his mother knew not of it. But they supposing him to have been in the company when a day's journey and they saw him among their kinfolk and acquaintances. And when they found him not, they turned back again to Jerusalem, seeking him. I like to use as a title, Where is Jesus? Let us pray. Eternal God in heaven, I stand at this sacred desk, Father God, as your ambassador. I ask you to speak through me, as the oracles of God and not a man. I ask you to take me out of it, set the preacher down, and stand your word up. Let there be no flesh in your message. Speak now to your people. I thank you for the victory. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, they're looking for Jesus. They went up to Jerusalem for the feast. Now, the feast lasted about seven days. 
So after that was fulfilled, the grown-ups in the company, they left and they went home. They didn't know that Jesus wasn't with them. But we need to be like Jesus. Jesus wanted to do some overtime with God. He wanted to stay and do overtime. The grown-ups just did what was required. I'm here to tell you today, if you go overtime with God, you can't be a loser. You sports fans, you got a team. If they go overtime, they might win. They might lose. If you're a football fan, you might get a tie in football in the NFL. But if you align yourself with Christ, you're a guaranteed winner. There's no way you can lose. You're a guaranteed winner. So that's what Jesus was doing. He stayed behind. So they went back, and after three days, they found Jesus in the temple. You know, we ought to always be able to find Jesus in the temple. We ought to always, if you can't find him nowhere else, now he's uh, omnipresent, that means he's everywhere. But if you ought to be able to find Jesus in the church house. That's where they found Jesus, this young 12-year-old. And it says they were amazed. Let me read what it says. They said. Me too. Okay, they said. Right here. They says, and it came to pass that after three days they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the doctors, both hearing them and asking them questions. And all that heard him were astonished. At 12 years old, they were astonished at his understanding and answers. I wish the youth was here because I wanted to tell them that you could be just like Jesus. You, we could be astonished at what you're saying. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He can endue you the endowment of the Holy Spirit is tangible. You could touch it. They saw that it was something about Jesus. But anyway, the kids ain't here, so I'm here to talk to the grown-ups, so that's fine. Now, when you study the Bible, Kitty, do you have that thing I asked you? I wanted something up on, yeah, they put something on. Let me read this to you. There is a principle. Okay, when you're trying to understand the Bible, or any book really, be it math, chemistry, or whatever, there's a principle which is a bar against all information, which is proof against all arguments, and which cannot fail to keep a man in everlasting ignorance. That principle is contempt prior to investigation. There is a lot of controversial stuff that's in the Bible. It's controversial. It's, it's hard to understand. But if you have contempt, you just say, oh, no, it ain't nothing to that. I'm just going to throw it away. Hey, man, you're going to be an everlasting ignorant. I'm going to give you an example of myself. About the second, third, fourth grade, I thought I was a math wizard. Two plus two is four. Three times two is six. Man, I got it. I got it. I, I got the report cards to prove it. I got it. But as soon as they started putting a letter <laughs> with a number, it was a wrap. I shut down like a light. I don't want to have nothing to do with it. I don't need it. So consequently, what happens? I'm 65 now, and uh, you can call me, hey, I don't care. You call me ignorant in math. I'm ignorant in math, man. I shut it down. I don't want to have anything to do with it. I had contempt. 
You ever been in court and say, well, you held in contempt of court. I had contempt before I even investigated it. And I probably, I probably could have been, I might have been good at it if I had uh, applied myself, but I didn't. I'm here to tell you, man, the Lord has sent me to tell you, man, it's the same way with this book. They got controversial subjects in this book. But if you have just said, no, it's nothing to it. And I'm telling you, it can't be nothing in this Bible. If God put it in the Bible, you can't have contempt for it if you study it. It's impossible. God is not going to write you a love letter that you can't understand. What kind of God is that? What kind of God is that? Oh, but I never heard, I never heard it preached. I never heard it taught. Oh, it's nothing to it. No, no. And let me tell you this. You are responsible for everything that you get out of this book. This brother here, he's here once a week. Who else is here? Now, no, no, I didn't mean that. Let me clean that up. He's here to, to present the word to us once a week. He's here more than that. I'm sorry, Pastor. I wouldn't. Hey, listen, listen, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something, because I'm serious about this. I'm not here to throw nobody under the bus. I'm, I'm here to tell you that. But I'm not going to let you throw me under the bus. Okay, so let's just, hey, let's, let's just be nice. I'm nice. That's right. Where's Jesus? Where's Jesus? Okay. I'm sorry, Pastor. I didn't mean that. But listen, listen. Hey, hey, man, I'm going to get back to where's Jesus. Don't worry about it. Get back to where's Jesus. But you can't have contempt prior to investigation. The Bible says, the study does show thyself approved unto God. So you ultimately are responsible for what you get out of the Word. Can you agree with that? I mean, you know, I mean, it sounds, it's just like you at school. You, you're responsible for what you get from the professor. If you need extra time, well, hey, you got to go and study it. You got to open up the book. You got to apply to certain principles. But I'm telling you, God is not going to hide nothing from you. He wants it more than you want it because he wants strong, uh, supernatural Christians. You, hey, the devil is supernatural and all his stuff he's doing, he's supernatural. So how are we going to be able to fight against the wiles of the devil? You're going to have to have spiritual ability. And it's here. So study to show thyself approved under God. Work with who need it not be a same writer. Then God, just in case you have a problem, something that you don't understand, he says if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask other fathers. He didn't say, now, if he send you to the commentary, you go to the commentary. But if almost an audible voice, I got to hear an audible voice. God telling me to go to a commentary. I'd rather just go straight to the source. He says, let him ask of God who dispenses this information liberally or bountifully, and he will not upbraid you. He says, oh, man, why are you asking that question? Hot man, come on, man, you've been in church 30 years. Why you? No, he's not like that. That's how we are. That's how your teachers may be. But God is the master teacher. The Holy Ghost is the master. The Holy Ghost is the master. Oh, man. He's the master. He's the master. He's not going to write it here, baby. He ain't going to write it here to trick you. He's not going to hoodwink. He's not going to flim flam you. He's not going to bamboozle you. He's going to make it clear, concise, that you can understand. That's if you're willing to put the time in. That's if you're willing to ask him. Labor in prayer. I'm not, hey, hey, hey. It ain't nothing wrong with praying four, five, six hours. Oh, I lost him now. But I'm telling you, it's nothing. Hey, the more you do, 
the more he's going to do for you. How bad do you want it? That's the question. And nowadays, nowadays, you people are depending on you. The preachers can only do so much. They're depending on you in the pews. He'll give you information. Psalms 119.99 says, I have more wisdom than all my teachers because I follow your testimony. He levels the playing field. You know, you got people that's educated, but if you look at the gospel, he was talking about Peter and John, he called them ignorant, unlearned men. Now, hey, if you can't qualify to be ignorant and unlearned, I mean, that's at the bottom of the totem pole, man. Amen. Amen. And uh, so remember that. Now, he said, man shall not live by bread alone. He say live, that word live, it means quickened, quickened, quickened. Made alive. Uh, your brain is on high intensity alert. And God is telling us that man cannot, cannot live by bread alone. But by every, now see that's, hey, that's a tough one because they got some controversial words in the book. He said, but by every, that's every, what's every mean? That means all the words, all the words. And God said, you can't live by bread alone, but by every. They got controversial, I'm telling you, they got controversial words in the word of God. But the book says that you can't live, be made alive, be quickened. We need quick Christians. And see, quick, he said the word of God is quick. Thank you, Brother Haley. The word of God is quick, powerful. Sharp than a two-edged sword. We need power to fight against this devil. Our children need power to fight against this devil. Oh, I wish they was here. I wish they was here because I tell them, hey, don't be paying attention to something that don't work. Them Kardashians and Mickey Minaj and, uh, yes, Beyonce knows with her little cute sedity self. Don't buy into the hype. Buy into the book. Buy into the book. The kids, that's for children. Because I'm going to tell you, you ain't got no kids in the church. You got a dead church. You got a dying church. If you don't have kids in there and you don't bring them up on the nurture and happiness of the Lord, hey, you got a dying church. Now, we want to see Jesus manifested. Right? They said, uh, go with me to John 14, 21. John 14, 21. John 14, 21. Now, listen to this. Listen to this. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. You say that if you got his commandments and you keep the commandments, Jesus, because these words are in red, they're dripping off the page. So Jesus is saying this. And love me, and he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father. You say, man, if you keep the commandments, Jesus, though you love him, you're going to be loved of the Father. Now watch this. And I will love, and Jesus will love you. You want to be loved by Jesus? Keep his commandments. Watch this. And will manifest or show. If you keep his commandments, beloved, he's going to manifest himself to you. He's not a man that can lie. He's going to manifest. You, what is manifest? He, you're going to see him. He's going to show himself. He's going to show himself in a tangible way. Now, it says if you keep his commandments. Now, let me tell you. Every word in here, if God tells you to do something in this book, even though it might not be in the Ten Commandments or whatever, it's a command. He's not giving you an option. I mean, he created the world, man. I mean, he, he knows all. He sees all. He knows all. So anything in this book that's telling you to do something, 
That's a command. So maybe you didn't, okay? So now let's read the main command, the great command. I lost that. I lost it. Oh, somebody help me. Where is it? Okay, anyway, it says, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all, so, with all your strength. And thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. They say these are the two uh, that the law and the prophets will stand on. Do we, get, do we love him with all our, all our heart? All our He's talking about all. Your heart, mind, soul, and to love your neighbor as yourself. So that's the command. They have other commands. They got when Jesus says, desire spiritual gifts. That's a command. He said, desire. He's not holding back. So, well, well, okay, Jesus. Well, I, I don't know about that one. If Jesus said it, if Paul said it through Jesus, So we ought, to, we ought to, to desire that. And I know that you'd rather get an iPhone, an iPad, flat screen TV, but just consider, he's the great gift giver. Now let's read about, it got mighty quiet, but that's okay. Let's read about uh, the humility of Jesus. I'm going to read just a couple of these, because I want to prove what I just said. John, let's do this, John 8.50. I seek not mine own glory. Because see, Jesus is not going to share his glory with any of us. He's not going to share his glory. The only time Jesus really got physical with folk was when they was doing something in the courtyard. You with me? In the courtyard of the temple. And if you're ready, if you're ready, he went in with a whip and a scourge and started turning over the tables and whipping people. Now that's on the outer court. Can you imagine what Jesus would have done if he saw anybody doing something inside? Inside the temple. Can you imagine? I wouldn't, I wouldn't have wanted to be there. If he saw people doing something on the inside of the sanctuary, that would not please him. He would not be pleased. And Jesus said, the words that I speak are not my own. So what does that mean? Jesus, now, now this is Jesus, God in human flesh. He said, the words that I speak are not my own. Whose words were they? Well, the Father's words. So even Jesus, he humbled himself to the point, the words that you hear me speak, they're not my words. So the words that Paul speaks, they're not his words. They're the words of the Holy Ghost and the Father. Jesus said, I, I do nothing of myself. Now, now, one of the things that is a problem is that you have idol worshipers. Saints of God are idol worshipers. Yes, if you idolizing these sports teams, you are idol worshipers. And that's just number one. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. And what I found, what God told me, is that we love to watch. See, LeBron James coming to the Lakers, man, I mean, he made the Lakers relevant again. Because you got to be mighty sick to watch them guys the last three or four years. You got to be just, you a sports fanatic if you watch them the last three or four years. But now they got LeBron James, okay? Now, do you know what his nickname is? You know what they call him? Who knows what they call him? King James. 
So now you got all the saints of God just sitting around drooling. Hey, man, listen, you didn't make it, man. You didn't make the pros, man. You didn't make it. Everybody can't make it. But they sit around watching, watching King James. Oh, look what he did. King James. But God rides the clouds as his chariot. And he rolls around. His feet are on the uh, wings of the wind. LeBron James can't do that. But anyway, we got to stop watching King James and feasting on King James. What a Mr. Faith. This is the King James version. This is the Bible. They said forever, oh, Lord, forever. LeBron James is one slip. What? Oh, there goes his Achilles. There goes his left anterior cruciate ligament. Then where you get? Number one, the guy's old. I'm saying, hey, it ain't nothing wrong with being a fan. But I'm going to tell you something. I gave up on all of them. The last I heard anything about the local sports teams, and I haven't had a TV in three years, but I just had, as a little boy, I loved the Dodgers, so I was listening to Game 7 and on the radio, you know, the last inning when they, they got beat. That's it. I haven't heard. I couldn't tell you what the Cowboys are doing. I couldn't tell you. And you know what? It's not really important to me anymore. I'm 65. I had my share. I remember, man, uh, uh, Jerry West, Jerry, Wilt the Stilt Chamberlain. Some of these youngsters don't know what I'm talking about, but Elgin Baylor, Jim Brown. Have you seen Jim Brown lately? He's broke down Jim Brown. <laughs> but we got to, we have to, Read the King James. That's where the power is going to come from. That's where the individual power is going to come from. You got to immerse yourself in the Word of God. Immerse yourself in prayer. You didn't make it. Paul said, when I was a child, I did as a child. I spake as a child. But then I became a man. And I'm going to put it in, then I became a Christian man. I got to put away childish things. You're childish, man. That's childish if you, if you just sit around, you know, drooling on the couch, watching the game. Yay! Yay! Man, hey, man, we got work to do. It's work to do. We need to do what, what the athletes do. They shoot a thousand shots a day, honing their game. They shoot a thousand shots a day. You could read five scriptures a day. Your children are depending on you. Your children are depending on you. Your schools are depending on you. Your neighborhoods are depending. We the body of Christ, and we don't know who's going to do it. I man, I grew up at a time. How you doing, Larry? I know Larry back there. Captain was a peaceful place, man. Larry, you man, you know, man. We in junior high school, walk all over Compton, 11, 12 o'clock at night. House parties. You remember the house parties in the garage? Slow jams on. Red light on? You bet not try to have a, a party in the garage nowadays. Get out of your mind. But this is what has happened to our neighborhood. Because God looks at us. He said, man, those are my spiritual leaders. And what? There's a lot of time that's wasted. Time that's wasted. We could do so much better. 
Why are we going to follow this God that created the universe and not going to get everything that we possibly can out of it? I'm talking about everything that you eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has entered into the heart of man, the thing that God has prepared for them. It starts and ends at the word. It's easy. The flower fades. The grass withers. But the word of our God shall. You say, shall. Say shall. That's a shell that you can put in your gun and cock it at the devil. He backs up at the word of God. He backs up at the word of God. I'm almost finished. I'm closing. Oh, you can't take your time. I can't take my time. I got to get it. But I keep, I'm going to go back to this. You are responsible. You can't, you can't think the preacher's going to do it, the deacon, the Sunday school teacher. You get what you get when you come here. Brother Hall is going to preach to you on Wednesday. But other than that, you got to hit it. You got to hit it. And you can't go wrong. We see that Jesus, I'm almost finished, we see that Jesus, he stayed behind to do overtime. He stayed behind. He, hey, he, he knew they was leaving. But no, man, he said, man, I got to, this guy's bringing the word. I got to sit and see what I can get out of that. So he stayed behind and did overtime. It goes on to say here, Mary and them, they came back. Oh, Jesus, you had us worried. We was about to put an amber alert in on you. We didn't know where you were. And that's what they would do today. They put an immediate amber alert. And it came to pass after three days, they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the doctors, both hearing them and asking questions. And all that heard him were astonished at his understanding, and answers. You know, the anointing can come to different levels. Because remember Elisha? What did he ask? He, he asked Elisha, he said, man, I want a double portion of what you got. Anybody want a double portion of what we got? We can strive for that. We can strive for that. And the only way that you can get it is in the Bible. And then he went on to say, and when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said unto him, Son, why hast thou thus dealt with us? Behold, thy father and I have sought thee sorrowing. And he said, 12 years old, look what he said. And he, how is it that ye sought me? Wish ye not, wish ye not that I must be about my father's business. It's a business, man. The spiritual, the spiritual life, it's a business. It's a business. And what I'm saying to anybody here, man, it's not personal. It's business. Do you remember the Godfather? Who ever seen the Godfather? You remember when the, the policeman hit Mike and broke his jaw? If you know what I'm talking about, raise your hand. Otherwise, I won't even do it. No, it's not enough of you. But anyway, you must be about your father's business. And also, I want to congratulate, when I first came here, I wasn't looking for God, I was looking for Brother Dudley, you've heard this before, so I'm not going to really go into it, I was looking for him. And I didn't, I came in, it was like I was on a raft, a raft, the tippers was tossing and turning, and I was able, I said, I just got to get over there, see Dudley and get out of there. I came in, there was a little precious man in a robe. I hadn't been to church in years. So I didn't see Dudley anywhere. So I followed the man out. I followed, it was Pastor Buzz. I followed him out into the vestibule. I said, do you have a, 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 a member named John Dudley? He said, yeah, but he's not here. I said, well, I really need to see him, sir. He took me in the office, and I was arrested. No, no. I was arrested by God and Pastor Buzz. 
I don't, I don't dare think what would have happened if Jesus, he was a type of, he was a type of Christ. This brother was a type of Christ. I don't know what would have, I didn't come looking for nothing but to pay this brother. That's all I came to do. I wasn't looking for God, but God was looking for me. God was looking for me. And I've been here since 98. I've been here ever since. Off and on, I go to other places, Macedonian calls. But what would have happened to me if I had not run into Pastor Buck? That's why you got to be uh, uh, on guard of what you do around here. You got to be on guard because somebody come, if somebody's acting a fool or it's not nice, they might turn away. So be careful the type of activities that go on here. you got to be careful. Because if Jesus ran a muck on them over what they were doing, money changing, and that's the outside, what, what do you think he would do if he saw something that was displeasing to him in the sanctuary? That's it, man. I'm not, I'm not going to say... Because remember, he's not going to give up his glory to nobody. Nobody. Don't get it twisted. He's not going to. He's a starter. Jesus is a starter. He's not a second team player. He ain't going to be on the bench. He's a starter. So it's got to be all about him. I'm telling all the men, it's not about you, player. And all the women, it's not about you, boo. It's not about you. It's not about you. Don't get it twisted. Because you can mess it up for everybody. You can mess it up. Hey, hey, hey. You can mess it up for everybody. Don't get it twisted. Because God sits high. He sees everything. He got an eagle eye. He sees what we are doing. You can't, there's nothing here from him. Nothing. Just be careful, that's all. Because what we want to go, we want to go to higher heights. We want to go to higher heights. We want the best that God has for us. And we can get it. We can get it. Now, it's Christmas time. I'm closing with this. I just mentioned spiritual gifts. So, oh, there he goes. But that's what the Lord has told me to say. It's December the 16th, right? It's December the 16th, 2018. I'm standing here. I have the Bible. The Bible says that it desires spiritual gifts. That's why I tell you, man, if you don't, if you lack wisdom, ask the Lord. He'll tell you. He, he, might, he might have to use a dead preacher, but they got, uh, what's that thing on? Uh, YouTube. They got YouTube. I got 7,000 prophets who have not lowered their knee to Baal. You know what Baal is? Baal is baseball, basketball, and football. He got 7,000. Some of them are uh, in the spot. They did. But if he see that you want to learn about a controversial subject in this book, he will send it to you. Some kind of way, you'll find it. I found uh, Derek Prince, Joel Osteen, Joel Osteen, not, not Joel, John Osteen, the old man. Wonderful teachers of the gospel. Been, been gone. But you can learn. You can learn. I think I better stop here, Pastor. God bless you. God keep you.
Yeah, I'm going I'm to stop there. Just pray to the Father. If you lack wisdom, ask him. Let's pray. Eternal God in heaven, I just thank you for your word. I thank you for using me. I hope I made you proud. And I thank you just for speaking through me and enduing me with power from on high. And I pray that this message is fell on, on people who might think, well, maybe I, I know it's got to be more than what I'm seeing or, or more than I've learned. And I ask you to send them in your word and make sure that everything that they want to hear you can send them to them. I'll be so careful to give you the praise. All the glory be thine. Jesus' name. Amen. The word of God has gone out. Would you please stand? It is now time for the invitation. Where is Jesus? Well, if you accepted him in your heart as your personal savior, you can truly say, Where is Jesus? He's in my heart. But if you have never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, then that is the question. Where is Jesus? That is the question. Where is Jesus? He's not in your heart. And today is a day of salvation. The good news, the gospel, Jesus Christ. You can have him in your heart simply by a prayer, simply by the words of inviting him in your heart as your personal savior. And then you have the answer then. Where is Jesus? Jesus is in my heart. And guess what? He will be with you forever and ever and ever and ever. But if you've never accepted him in your heart as your personal savior, that is the question. Where is he? Today is the day. Won't you invite him in today? Won't you have him as your Lord and Savior? And we're inviting you to come down and let the church and let us know that yes, I have accepted Jesus Christ in my heart as my personal Savior because he is my Lord. And if you're looking for a church home and you've never had really a church that you can say, this is my home. You don't have to be homeless anymore. Central Baptist can be your church. Is there one today? Accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior or coming to let us know that, yes, I would like to have Central as my church, the place that I can grow and be discipled. Is there one? Today is a day. The minutes are passing, but guess what? Jesus loves you more than you ever know. And he's inviting you to come now. Is there one? Let us bow our heads for prayer. Dear Lord God, we just thank you and praise you for what you have done and what you're going to do. And we ask that Lord God, that if there be one that even if not even yet during this time that we have the invitation, even if it's after church, even if it's at, at another time, that someone can come and ask, how can I be saved? This is our prayer. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated.